I know you're probably ready to start building websites from scratch. We're going to begin that journey this week, but before we start doing that, we're going to need to know a couple of specific rules that are very important for you to be aware of when you build and create websites. So let's make sure that you have the basics down before we get into this. I promise understanding this will save you a whole bunch of time and frustration. The very first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up the appropriate folder and file structure in order for your website to function correctly. I'm going to explain how you can optimally set up your folder structure so that your website will always work whether you're hosting it locally on your own machine or FTPing it up to the internet for the world to see. In order to be a good web developer, you need to have an excellent handle on file management. If your files end up all over the place on your computer and there's no rhyme or reason to how you name and store the various items that are going to be part of your website, then your website is not going to function. So if you can follow these simple rules, you will always have success as far as building a website and then transporting the website to other places. I like to think of the folder that contains my website as a suitcase. It contains all of the relevant material that I'll need for my website. And if I decide to go and travel somewhere, all I need to do is grab my suitcase, i.e. my website, and then it'll just go ahead and travel with me. Let's take a look at what I have inside the suitcase. The first thing that you'll want to put in your suitcase is a root folder. This folder is going to contain all of the elements that have to do with the website. I like to create a root folder and call it root because then I know right away that it contains the elements that I'm going to upload to the web. When you're working for a client, there's a high likelihood that you're going to have other things, not just the website that you're doing for them. Anything that is not directly related to the website should not go in the root folder. If your particular client wants you to build a logo for them or create business cards or edit a video, all of those things can still go in an overarching suitcase that you have for that client, the client's folder, but all of those things need to be contained in their own relevant folders. Because we're just building websites, we're only going to be concerned with the root folder. The reason I'm telling you this is that I don't want to see anything that is not directly related to the website inside of the root folder. If you're going to include other elements when you turn assignments in or show me things, then make sure they stay outside of the root folder. I highly encourage you to stay organized because the more websites you build, the more files that you're going to have to manage. And if you come up with a strategy right away and always follow that strategy, it's going to be very easy for you to know where everything is in relationship to the project that you're going to be working on. The other thing that I want to point out is that each unique website that you're going to be building will have its own root folder. Let's take a look at what I have inside the root folder. Now the contents of the root folder are not set in stone. You may have some of these files and folders, or you may have all of them. You may have more files and folders, but the things that you will always have for a website to function are an index.html file. This is your home page, and yes, it has to be called index.html. You could also call it index.htm and it'll work fine, but if you use any other name, it's not going to display when you type your domain name in on the web. So if you type in any domain name.com and the home page pops up, it's showing because you've named the file index.html. If you name the file something like home.html or mywebsite.html, then you're going to have to type the domain name add a forward slash, and then name the specific file. In order to make it easy for people to reach your website, we always call the home page index.html. Your home page must always be in the root folder and named correctly. As I mentioned, it is possible to call it index.htm or index.php if you're making a PHP website, but for our purposes in this course, I recommend using index.html. Now one side note on naming files for web use. Whenever you name your files, whatever they are, images, HTML files, scripts, CSS files, even the names of folders that you have, they need to follow these rules. No spaces and no funky characters. 
Whenever you're going to name something that's going to display on the web, it always has to be displayed as a name that does not contain any of the things I just mentioned. These would all be examples of viable names for use on the internet. When we name files, it is possible to use capitals and lowercase, although I do recommend just using lowercase unless you're going to be writing something that has multiple words. Notice the string of letters that I have right here. It's actually a bunch of words all slammed together without spaces, and you'll see that it's very difficult to read. But notice what happens when we use something called camel casing, where everything is lowercase except for the first letter of any subsequent word other than the first one. You can see how you can much more easily read the string of text. In many cases, this is my preferred naming convention to use. So throughout this course, you'll see me using camel casing, unless I'm really concerned with SEO, in which case I will use the dashed method. I like to have this naming convention, camel casing, as my default method because then I know right away exactly how I name the files. If you tend to mix casing, like sometimes use capital letters and sometimes use lowercase, or sometimes add dashes and sometimes put underscores, well then you have to remember all of that. Because the web is case sensitive, which means that if I named my file page.html with all lowercase, or if the file was named page.html with an uppercase P, those are actually different pages. When I make a link or call a page, I have to refer to it with the exact same case that I named the file as. So you can save yourself a lot of hassle if you just come up with a naming convention and then stick with that naming convention because then you'll know that you're always naming your files in the same way. As I mentioned, you cannot use spaces on the internet. So in lieu of spaces, if you don't like the camel casing method, you can use underscores, like what I have right here, or you can use dashes, like what I'm showing you here. One other naming convention that I recommend is that you don't start any of your files with a numeric character. Although HTML files do allow this, it's not recommended for other sorts of file types, like script files, and also when creating names within your CSS files, this can be problematic. In order to just keep things a little bit easier for you to remember, I recommend that you do not use numeric characters when you start your file name. So it would be fine to name my file mystyle2.css, but I would avoid starting any of the file names with a numeric character. So if you just remember these rules, you'll be good. No spaces, no funky characters. I recommend using lowercase, camel casing, or using the dashes or underscores. Don't start file names with numbers and always use file extensions. Anything that you put on the web has to have a file extension. So let's get back to talking about our root directory and how we need to organize that. As you can see in my root folder right here, I have several subfolders that are contained within it. And then of course I have my index page. The index page, as I mentioned, has to be named index.html. It also has to be at the root level which means that this page cannot be tucked inside my pages folder. It needs to reside at root level. I am a big fan of keeping things organized. So when you build websites, I'm going to recommend that you put any sub pages into your pages folder. That's going to look something like this. Anything other than my index page is going to reside inside the pages folder. This is what we call a sub page. And you can see that we're going to have specific names that will be unique to the contents of that page. Any images that I want to display on my site are going to go inside the images folder. Any CSS is going to be located in the CSS folder and any scripts will be in the scripts folder. Now, of course, the folder names and the file names are unique to your project. They don't have to be named exactly what I've named them. The only name that really matters is your index page. Your home page will always be called index.html. Everything else just needs to follow the naming conventions that we already discussed. When you begin to build a website, you'll always make sure that you structure your website directory in this manner. 
and in this way you can keep all of the files and materials organized in a way that will make it easy for you to update and make changes to your website. Your pages folder might look something like this, where you're going to have pages each with its own unique name and they will all live inside the pages folder. You'll connect these pages together by linking them and we'll learn how to do this as we go through the class. Another way of looking at our website is to look at it in a site map type of view. The site map is a visual representation of how the site is structured. This is a very simple site map that shows that the index page, the home page, is linking out to all of these sub pages. Site maps can get quite extensive depending on the size of the website that you're developing, but these are great components of the architecture that can help when you're designing and developing a website. This will aid in knowing how the user can get from whatever page to whatever other page. As we go through this course, we'll learn how to do all of these things. So now that you know a little bit about how to organize the files and folders within the root directory, and you know something about how to name them, you're ready to start developing your website. And once your website's done, you can travel with your website. You can put it in different locations and ultimately get it up on the internet so anyone can view it.